Today, we will look at the cases of three professional athletes who are currently locked up. Lumumba Sayers Sr. participated in MMA from 2007 to 2014. He fought several times for Strike Force and appeared on the Ronda Rousey vs. Misha Tate card in 2012. After stepping away from the fighting game, he became an anti-gun advocate in Aurora, Colorado. In 2015, he started Heavy Hands, Heavy Hearts, a nonprofit that tries to help young people stay off the streets and busy. On August 19, 2023, two people were shot and killed around 4 a.m. in Denver's Five Points neighborhood. One of the people killed was 23-year-old Lumumba Sayers Jr., and the other was 25-year-old Gulian Musiwa. Two others were injured. Sayers Jr. was also an anti-gun activist and ran a non-profit called Gloves Up, Guns Down. Reports indicate he was protecting his sister when he was shot. 24-year-old Terrell Braxton was arrested a month after the double homicide, but the charges were later dropped. He is still facing charges for illegal possession of ammo. Things took a shocking turn when Sayers Sr. went to a child's birthday party on August 10, 2024, and shot 28-year-old Malcolm Watson three times. The party happened to be for Watson's son. Witnesses claim that after shooting Watson, Sayers Sr. tried to plan a weapon on his body before fleeing the scene. When medical personnel arrived, they pronounced Watson dead. Sayers Sr. was arrested the following morning and is being held on a $5 million bond. Police believe that the shooting was retaliation for the death of Sayers Jr., but they are still trying to put all the pieces together. Kevin Ware Jr. was born in San Diego, California, on September 30, 1980. He starred at Kai Lane Oak High School in Harris County, Texas. He was All-State and listed as the 28th best player in Texas. After his high school success, he moved on to play for the University of Washington. The tight end didn't do much in his first few years at the university, but he excelled as a senior in 2002, catching 42 passes for 463 yards and scoring five touchdowns. His strong season was overshadowed by his arrest for misdemeanor assault. He later pleaded guilty and received a suspended sentence. When the 2003 NFL draft rolled around, Ware was not selected, but a week later, he signed a contract with the Washington Redskins. He made it to the active roster and played 11 games before being waived in June 2004. San Francisco gave him a chance the following season, but they cut him on November 30, 2004. He would never play another NFL game. In June 2010, just before 2 a.m., Ware allegedly assaulted a valet outside a Houston, Texas bar. Ware fled the scene, but cops caught up with him soon after. He was arrested and thrown in the back of a squad car, but he was able to escape and run away while still handcuffed. He didn't get far and was quickly recaptured. He was hit with escape charges and theft charges from a case in May 2010 when he walked out of a bar without paying. In 2018, he got locked up for two years for intent to manufacture or deliver a controlled substance. After he was released, he started a relationship with Taylor Pamaski. According to witnesses, the couple had a tumultuous relationship. On April 19, 2021, Ware was pulled over in Magnolia, Texas, after driving 115 miles per hour. Police searched his car and found cocaine, methamphetamine, and other drugs. They also found two guns. He was arrested for possession, with intent to deliver and felon in possession of a weapon. He was released on bond the next day. On April 25, 2021, Ware and 29-year-old Pamaski had a party at their Spring, Texas home. Pamansky was never seen alive again. On June 21, 2021, Ware was arrested again because he didn't meet the conditions of his bail from the April arrest. On December 10, 2021, human remains were found in Harris County, Texas. Five months later, they were confirmed to be Pamaski. Court records indicate she was strangled, cut, and beaten before being burned. On July 28, 2002, Ware was charged with her murder. He was also charged with tampering with a corpse. In late 2022, he pleaded guilty to felon in possession of a weapon and drug distribution charges. He was sentenced to 15 years in prison. He is awaiting trial for the murder of Pamaski.
Evangelos Gusis was born on September 14, 1967, in Tashkent, now known as Uzbekistan. His family moved to Australia when he was eight years old. He learned to box and kickbox as he entered his teen years. People thought he had natural talent, the perfect physique, and a strong chin. They thought he could be a world champion. He was so good that he was a contender for the 1988 Summer Olympics, but he failed to qualify. His biggest downfall was his lack of focus and hanging with the wrong crowd. In January 1988, he worked as a nightclub bouncer. The guys that owned the club were also heroin dealers. They felt a distributor was cheating them, so they had Goosey bring the man to a vacant home so they could kill him. Once the distributor arrived at the home, he was stabbed. He survived the attack and was able to name names. Goosey's ended up arrested and charged with attempted murder and heroin trafficking. He was sentenced to 18 months because he played a minor role in the attack. When he got out of prison, he claimed he wanted to turn his life around. He started focusing on kickboxing, and soon he was knocking out every challenger. He soon became the middleweight champ of the World Kickboxing Association. He also held an International Sport Karate Association title and several other belts. By 1995, he returned to boxing, winning two of three boxing matches. But after that, he started hanging out with the wrong people again. He began to protect local criminal Nick Radev and almost got involved in a plot to kill one of Radev's rivals. But Radev was killed before they could execute the plan. On March 31, 2004, masked men entered a pool hall in Melbourne and targeted 62-year-old Louis Moran. Moran tried to run when he saw the men, but they caught up with him and shot him twice, killing him. One of his friends, Bertie Rout, was also shot in the attack. On May 8, 2004, Goosey and his associate Keith Four traveled from Geelong to Melbourne to meet Louis Kane at a hotel. Kane was allegedly trying to hire the men to kill someone, but they double-crossed Kane because they had already been paid to kill him. Kane was shot once in the head and dumped on a dead-end street. His body was found later that day. Goosey's was arrested in the middle of May 2004 for the two gang-related murders. He claimed self-defense in the murder of Kane, telling authorities that Kane tried to shoot him first, but his gun jammed. Lawyers were able to prove the Kane murder was a paid hit, not self-defense, and he was convicted. Later, he was also convicted for the murder of Moran. He was sentenced to 33 years to life for both crimes. In 2012, Goosis and two others were hit with charges for the June 4, 2003 murder of 28-year-old Shane Chartres Abbott. Chartres Abbott was killed outside his home just as he was headed to court to face a rape charge. At their 2014 trial, Goosey and the other two were found not guilty of killing Chartres Abbott 